Now, Peter, you're familiar with the J.P. Morgan spoofing case that's been making rounds and headlines all around the world. They were fined $920 million for illegal spoofing of the metals. Now, investors have speculated that price manipulation and spoofing have had an impact on metals prices. What's your view on this? Do you agree or disagree with this? Yeah, have they had an effect on metals prices? Uh, yes, uh, but I want to qual- uh, qualify that yes. Uh, I mean, spoofing is illegal. I mean, they put in uh, market orders uh, to give the market an impression uh, that they uh, that they had uh, size trades to do at a certain price, and uh, uh, people saw those uh, those uh, those orders laying uh, on the ledgers, and uh, uh, you know, and traded in anticipation of those orders being filled, then expecting the price to even go higher and or lower, uh, and that's the the main caveat on my next point, uh, and. Um, and uh, J.P. Morgan uh, pulled uh, not only J.P. Morgan. Uh, there were a number of banks involved in this, but uh, pulled uh, pulled the trade. Uh, you know, before it got executed, and uh, and you know the guys that basically uh, traded the market in anticipation of those orders being filled uh, probably got burnt. Maybe uh, I don't know. I don't know what the damage was on the other side of the ledger on this trade, but. Um, it's an illegal practice that's been stopped. I, I wouldn't say it's been stopped, but it, they were caught and they and they got charged a billion dollars. I mean, similar to uh, the practices that were occurring uh, on some of the venture exchanges, uh, specifically in Canada back in the 70s and 80s, where you had promoters that were front running stocks. And I still think uh, there are people out there that front run stocks. Uh, you know, they buy, they have options or warrants and uh, they go out and they promote a stock. And as the retail public comes in or uh, their client base comes in and buys it, they sell into their clients buying. Uh, should be illegal. Uh, concern, the concern here, Peter, is that uh, some traders and investors of metals think that prices should be a lot higher. But then institutions like banks and perhaps even governments are keeping it down or suppressing the prices through manipulation. Do you, is that? Okay, but, but- yeah, but, but the argument I would have there is you're making the assumption that spoofing only goes one way. So if J.P. Morgan was laying in a trade uh, to try to get the market lower, you could argue, well, yeah, they artificially uh, depressed the price. But I'm sure they did it both ways. And, and you know, they spoofed to the upside. The point being is that when the trade was pulled or executed, the market will always find its value. There are buyers and sellers in this market that are massive, uh, including the central banks. So if JP Morgan was able to uh, spoof the price down by putting fake sell orders in below the market and the market came down four or five or ten dollars on gold and then they pulled they pulled the trade uh, and and the value of gold should have been ten dollars higher prior to this uh, manipulation of spoofing. Uh, it doesn't affect the value of the market for any more than a moment in time. Uh, it, it, it doesn't change the course of the direction of the market. If the market is in a bull trend for whatever fundamental reasons or or uh, or or action by central banks, you know the fact that there's a big bank out there trying to throw a couple of metric tons on there and spoofing it down for ten dollars so they can pick up a quick three hundred thousand dollars in profit will not fundamentally change the direction of where the market was going in the first place. And everybody assumes spoofing was done to drop the price. But th- there's no reason not to believe, and again, the CFTC didn't elaborate, but that there's no reason to believe that spoofing wasn't done the other way around and also caused spike increases, uh, price increases uh, on a fake buy order that was pulled. So hard for me to come down with a yes uh, that this depressed pricing, um, because this was done between, uh, you know, a a window of time. Um, And how do you uh, account for the fact that gold uh, since... uh, 2016 has been pretty much on an uptrend. And how do you account for the fact that gold's gone from 1500 uh, in March of this year uh, to $2,100, albeit it's at 1900 now? Uh, yeah, you could make the argument, well, it would be at $3,000 an ounce, but there, there's no sound logic behind that. You can make mathematical arguments, but the market is what the market is. There's buyers and sellers. And they come, they come to terms at what they consider to be an equitable price. 
if the sellers are selling more than there are buyers, then that equitable price will drop. If there are more buyers than sellers, then the equitable price where the next trade happens will be higher. That's the nature of the market. I don't think spoofing has any um, long-term effect on the value of the market. So as a trader, this is not something that concerns you on a daily basis? Well, it would, yeah, it would tick me off if I was... But again, you know, I'm sitting here as a trader and I'm looking at the open interest on the COMEX, for example, and I see that there's, uh, there's uh, you know, whatever, 20 lots offered at or bid at $2 below the market. Okay, so I'm trading on that news. I'm assuming that, okay, if I, you know, if I sell here, there's going to be a bid down here, I'll cover down here or vice versa if I take the other side of the trade. But I see that. So I'm, I'm trading on the anticipation that I can make the money. All of a sudden, the order gets pulled. Shame on me. I got fooled because uh, somebody uh, put in fake orders. And, you know, this is not retail clients that are in. I'm, I'm not saying there aren't some that are in the futures market. This is happening in the futures market, in the paper market. And it's happening between banks and, 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 and big institutional investors. And... Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's not meant to take the retail guy out. So, you know, the, I, I, I'm looking I'm looking at the at the positions lining up as to what's being offered, what's being sold from a lot perspective on the futures markets. I am then making the decision to enter that trade in anticipation of those orders being filled. Then the orders get pulled and I get nailed. But 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 I'm I'm. A player as well in this market. So when people are saying the futures markets like COMEX are rigged, quote unquote, what exactly is that referring to? Well, rigged in the sense that if you've got a big player out there uh, and, uh, you know, uh, again, you come in on Asian market hours at six o'clock on a Sunday night and you try to drop in a thousand contracts, it's obviously because there's no buy side volume for that quantity there it's going to tank the market $20, $30. But then when the market absorbs that, it then still looks at the fundamentals of why the market was $20 higher before that sale. And generally, when you see those types of, uh, those, uh, those types of movements in a thin market, it almost reverses within hours. And, and it gets back to the level it was before that big order hit the market. Now, is that manipulation? Uh, look, if I'm going to sell a thousand contracts short at 1900 gold, I'm not making any money until I cover those contracts. So somewhere down the road, I've got to buy those thousand contracts back or I'm at a loss. So yeah, I might be able to get, I sell it at uh, 1900, I sell a thousand, now it drops 20 bucks. But if I go in to buy a thousand at 1980, there might not be any sellers there. Uh, I might have to pay uh, 1900 again. Uh, so it's not that clear cut that you can just uh, move the market for any prolonged period of time by using those types of strategies. Uh, but it does distort pricing on a short term basis. Uh, agreed. Uh, but does it materially hurt a retail investor from a longer trend? If the market's in a downtrend, it will stay in that downtrend. If the market's in an uptrend, it will stay in that uptrend. Uh, again, it's hard to come up with quantifiable math to see what is the damage here. Peter, it was a pleasure to speak with you today. Thanks for your insights. Yeah, my pleasure, David. Thank you. And thank you for watching Kitco News. We'll have much more for you. Stay tuned.